Hello, my dear students. How are you today? I hope you are well. Before we proceed with discussing our lesson for today, I would like to say thank you to Sir Raymond Ledesma for allowing me to use this presentation. I just added some information that I think will be useful in our discussion. Module number two is all about the perpetuation of life. We are done discussing lesson one, which is all about the reproduction of plants. So today, we will be discussing our second lesson, which is all about the reproduction of animals. Our objective is to describe how animals reproduce sexually and asexually. Our previous lesson is all about the reproduction of plants. We have discussed that plants reproduce sexually and asexually. Plants have male and female organs that made it possible for these organisms to produce. It also includes the pollen and egg formation, followed by pollination and then fertilization. We also discussed the vegetative propagation, that includes bulb, corm, rhizome, runners, and tubers. Okay, so let us now have your first virtual activity for this lesson. Do you still remember the characteristics of living things that we have discussed before? Okay, so you're just going to identify which characteristic of living things is illustrated in the images below. So I will be giving you three minutes to do that. You can use the comment section below to comment your answer. Kindly include also your name and your section. Okay, so let us now reveal the answer. For number one, 
the first illustration or picture exhibits the characteristics wherein or characteristic wherein living things metabolize. Very good. That is correct. Second, number two. The picture shows what kind of characteristic. It shows that living things reproduce because as you can see on the picture we have there the uh, reproductive organs of a male uh, male and female human next number three third characteristic we have living things respond to stimuli and then last one number four living things adapt and evolve so very good Let's check your answers later. Let us now have your second virtual activity. You're just going to answer the following questions. Number one, what organ systems are shown in item number two? Second question, what could be the purpose of the organ systems in item number two? Kindly comment down your answer together with your complete name and section that will serve as your attendance for this class. Let's unfold. So, uh, when we say sexual reproduction, it is a haploid. When we say haploid, it refers to any cell that has 23 chromosomes, so half of the total of 46. And gametes are specifically sex cells that have 23 chromosomes. Diploid refers to any cell that has all 46 chromosomes. And zygote is the result of two gametes or haploid of diffusing cell and becoming a diploid cells. So a haploid, uh, a haploid sperm cell and a haploid egg cell unite to form a diploid. That is um, the description or the definition of sexual reproduction. Where in the case, there are 23 chromosomes from male and then 23 chromosomes from female forming a total of 46 chromosomes or a diploid cell. Let us now discuss the different types of fertilization. The first one is cross fertilization. Allogamy or cross fertilization is the fertilization of an ovum from one individual with the, with the spermatozoa of another. By contrast, the second type of fertilization, which is self-fertilization, happens when the fusion of male and female gametes, or also known as the sex cells, happens in just one individual. Other term for self-fertilization, it is also known as autogamy. So autogamy is the term used for, for self-fertilization. In humans, the fertilization event is an instance of allogamy. So examples of organisms that exhibit this type of fertilization is the tapeworm in the intestine. Aside from that, Self-fertilization occurs in bisexual organisms, including most flowering plants, numerous protozoans, and many invertebrates. Autogamy, the production of gametes by the division of a single parent cell, is frequently found in unicellular organisms such as the protozoan paramecium. The third type of fertilization is the external fertilization that happens when the gametes occur in an open environment and not inside the body of organisms. 
Examples of organisms that exhibit this type of fertilization are the following. So we have the frogs, the crabs, corals, and many fishes. Second type of reproduction is the asexual reproduction. When we say asexual reproduction, it is a type of reproduction that does not involve the fusion of gametes or change in the number of chromosomes. The offspring's genetic material is identical to the parent organism. Examples of asexual reproduction are the following, budding, fragmentation, and parthenogenesis. Let us now unfold the different examples of asexual reproduction. So, the first one is body. So, body is a type of asexual reproduction in which a new organism develops from an outgrowth or bud due to cell division at one particular site. The small bulb-like projection coming out from the yeast cell is called a bud. Aside from that, when we say budding, it involves the splitting of new individuals from an existing organism by forming buds from the parent's body. These small buds arise on the parent's body and then later detach, the, detach and settle to the ground where they become mature individuals. Another example of that is the hydra. Another one is fragmentation. Fragmentation as a method of reproduction is seen in organisms such as the filamentous cyanobacteria, molds, lichens, sponges, acoil flatworms, some annelid worms, and sea stars. Fragmentation also happens when a single parent breaks into parts or fragments that gives rise to new individuals. So as you can see here on the uh on the third column, we have here the example of, the, of fragmentation, which is the starfish. And uh, next to starfish is the picture of an aquoil flatworm. The third one is the parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis is a natural form of asexual reproduction in which growth and development of embryos occur without fertilization by sperm. In animals, parthenogenesis means development of an embryo from an unfertilized egg cell. Let's extend. So what is in vitro fertilization or also known as IVF? In vitro fertilization is a complex series of procedures used to help with fertility or prevent genetic problems and assist with the conception of a child. During IVF, mature eggs are collected or retrieved from ovaries and fertilized by sperm in a lab. Then, the fertilized egg or embryo or eggs or the embryos are transferred to a uterus. One full cycle of IVF takes about three weeks. Sometimes, these steps are split into different parts and the process can take longer. IVF is the most effective form of assisted reproductive technology. The procedure can be done using a woman's own eggs and her partner's sperm. Or IVF may involve eggs, sperm, or embryos from a known or anonymous donor. In some cases, a gestational carrier, a woman who has an embryo implanted in her uterus, might be used. Thank you so much for attending my class today and I hope that you have learned something. All the pictures and ideas used in the PowerPoint presentation 
are credits to the rightful owner. 